Yes. All right, quickly then. Dr. Patton. Yes, Bob, put that Jack! Hello! I'm doing a bit round for Dennis's part. Oh, yeah? Fiver ahead. I'm on duty. You're dropping in, though, won't you? We can't let him go without a decent send-off. I suppose Mr Mullet will be making one of his speeches, will he? Well, he's bound to, isn't he? He would be paying us a fiver then, shouldn't he? Oh, all right, all right. There you go. What about him? He's only been here five minutes. I haven't been asked. Well, you've saved yourself a fiver, haven't you? Cheers, Jack. Cheers. Oh, he's right, though. You hardly know the man. Is that why I haven't been asked, Governor? Oui. Costello, we all know you've had a problem settling in here, but don't you shake your beads at me, eh, son? Because I'm inclined to get ever so irritable. He's been here again, hasn't he? Hasn't he? Right. That's it. No more excuses. Willie! Willie! Ray, please. <laughs> Denton. Oh, I'll sort it out, I promise. I will, I promise. I've had enough, Annie. I mean it. Enough. Police. Sergeant Johnson. Denton Police. Hello? Hello? Excuse me, sir. Mm, what's happened? Uh, we're wondering if you're going to be much longer. I'm having a meal break. Yes, sir, I know, sir, but the thing is, we need to get the place ready for Sergeant Brake's retirement party. Are you telling me to hop it? Oh, no, sir. All I mean is, well, if you don't mind. Oh, go on, get on with it. Yes, sir. Just do it quietly, will you? Quietly, yes, sir.
Dennis. Good evening, sir. It's nice to see you. See you, and you, yes, my wife. Audrey. It's been a long time. Good evening, sir. Uh, can I get you a drink? Yes, very civil of you. Um, Arthur, vodka. I may vodka and tonic, just a small one. Uh, George, can you get me a vodka and tonic for all in the Oh, he's arrived, is he? No, he's over there. Right. One. Vodka. Small one, he said. Yeah, well, liven him up a bit, won't you? You wanted these overtime returns. Hmm? Oh, good, you checked them. Here, right, stick them in the post, will you? Well, there's not another county collection till tomorrow afternoon. Oh, yeah. It's none of my business, but if these returns don't get there first thing tomorrow, they'll miss the salary checks and you'll have a mutiny on your hands. Yes, you're right. You better drive them over there, then, then. It's nearly an hour each way. Well, got something better to do, have you? though, isn't it, sir? A lot of studying, a lot of homework. I'm not sure if I'm ready for it. There you go, sir. Oh, right. Uh, thank you, um... Keith. Keith, of course, yes. Thank you very much, Keith. Another fizzy water for you, Hazel? No, I'm fine, thank you, Keith. I'll leave you to it, then. Right, um, uh, where were we? You were asking why I hadn't put in for my sergeant's exam, and I was saying what a lot of work it was, and I wasn't sure if I was ready for it. Yes, well, let me tell you what I think. Uh, would you like to hear what I think? Yes, yes, yes of course. Yes. Well, it does seem to me that women have a particularly valuable part to play. I was a best soldier on parade, I told him. That's so I was sent to him, I said. That's it, I'm not a sin. My brother was in the Salvation Army. So don't talk to me about pretty soul stores. I want to hear with them. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, very nice. And yourself? Oh, yes, very enjoyable. Want to have this sort of get-together more often. <laughs> Let a hair down, uh, get things off our chest, eh? Yeah, quite right, sir. You ought to mention it to that finance committee you're always going on about. How's, um, Costello shaping up? Mm, oh, he's all right. He hasn't hit anyone yet, if that's what you mean. Oh, any problems, just let me know. Yes, I will, sir. Thank you. If you'll excuse me, I'll... Um, look, uh, Jack. Well, we've had our differences. Of course we have. You're a street copper. I'm one of those boring old farts who thinks about nothing else but keeping his books straight. No, 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 no need to deny it. I know what two chaps think of me. And to some extent it's true. I've spent more time in college than I have on the streets. And I'm... Sir. A bit... oh, and I'll have to admit that when it comes to the practical side of policing, uh, sometimes I'm out of my depth. Well, you take my point, Jack. Yes, yes, I do, absolutely. Yeah. So I said to him, how's the golf going then, Dennis? And he said to me, well, it's a bit dodgy, actually, sir. 
when my uh, woods are working, my irons are no good. When um, my irons are working, my woods are no good. And when they're both working, my wife won't let me play. <laughs> well, uh, well, I suspect she'll be letting him play a lot more in future, if only to get him out from under her feet. Isn't that right, Audrey? <laughs> and uh, a word of warning, Dennis. I have it on uh, very good authority that your handicap is under investigation by the fraud squad. <laughs> uh, well, I, I can see that you're all getting thirsty, uh, so, so I won't detain you any longer. Except to say that um, we're going to miss you, Dennis. And I know that you're going to miss us. Well, if not us exactly, then, um, then certainly the job. <coughs> but, of course, we all know that policing is more than just a job. It's like family. One way or another, you might say that despite uh, rank or, or um, experience, we're all brothers under the surge. Oh. Down here, sir. Oh, hang about, hang about. There's no rush. If he's dead, he'll wait. If he isn't, you're in serious trouble, Constable. I was listening to Mr. Mullet's speech. Are you the one that found him, are you? Uh, yes, me. I'll teach you to find somewhere a bit more upmarket, won't it? Pardon? Next time you stop off for a Jimmy Riddle. Oh, no, when I call the nature, it's part of my rounds. It's all these cutbacks, you see, sir. There's no full-time attendant anymore. So we have to lock up. Oh, I see. Yeah, quite right and all. I mean, we can't have people using a place like that as a public convenience, can we? What's the world coming to? No, the thing is, there's a lot of valuable lead and copper piping down there. So we have to keep very much on the alert. Otherwise, we lose the contract. It's a very cutthroat business, this is. Quite right, sir. Quite right. I'll only keep my big mouth shut. Go on, carry on. No, well, that's it, really. I went down, he was sprawled on the floor. So I immediately contacted you lot. Call the doctor. He's on his way, sir. Right. Oh, well, can't put it off any longer. Come on, down we go. The thing is... I'm behind with my rounds, so unless you need me. No, it's all right, son. You go off. If we want you, we'll get in touch. Right, here we go. Lay me now, Austin. It's a wash down here. Oh, bloody hell, didn't you warn me? It wasn't as bad as this before, sir. Yes, sir. Systems over, flying body must be blocking the drain. Oh, it's better and better. Well, come on, where is he? To the right there, sir. We have to get our feet wet, I'm afraid. It's my fancy. It's all padded. Oh. Right, Let's have a look at you. Oh, no. It's Ben Cornish. We know him, do you, sir? Yes. Since he was a kid. Been in trouble from the minute he was born. Druggy by the look of him. Yes. Drugs, booze, you name it. Isn't there any way we can stop this bloody water? Which that one there, sir? Well, don't give me a running commentary on it, son. See if you can fix it. And what's happened to the rotten lights in this place? Don't tell me they're cutting back on those at all. Oh, there's a switch in the corner, but they're all locked up. Not anymore, they're not. I think that's I don't know. I think it was more romantic, but the light's off. Anybody home? Yes, come on, Doc. We're down here. 
Inspector Frost, I should have guessed. Somehow one associates you with places like this. Doc, you shouldn't have got yourself all tarted up. It so happens I was at a function. Yeah, you and me both. This is him, then, it is. No, no, this is one we had left over from yesterday. Do we know who he is? His name's Ben Cornish. He's a dropout, he's been living rough. He's on drugs and booze and whatever else he can lay his hands on. Or could. Ah, oh, well. That's it, then, isn't it? Ten a penny. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you going to examine him, or aren't you? I mean, none of us want to be down here, you know, apart from you. You don't really expect me to slop through that lot. Well, what else can we do? The body is blocking the drain. Well, move the damn thing. All right. I want a photographer. Oh, don't be bloody ridiculous. You said yourself he's an addict. I want a photographer, Socko, and forensic down here. I want this place sealed off for further inquiries. Bloody ridiculous. Now! Well, Doctor, I'm waiting. Inspector Frost is out on a call. All right. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. I haven't finished. Next time you want to attract my attention, you address me by name, and then you wait until I'm ready to respond. Understood, Constable? Yes, Sergeant. Understood. Right. Make some tea. What? There's a kettle over there. Brew for six. Or is putting a kettle on beneath the dignity of an ex-inspector? Because if it is, hard bloody luck. There is some bleeding to the back of the head. I'd say it almost certainly resulted from his head colliding with a stone floor when he fell. However, it was not for the cause of death. Something you seem to have missed, Inspector? Cheap rum laced with industrial alcohol by the smell of it. Uh, he drank himself senseless, fell, and choked on his own vomit. Well, oh, it's a lesson to us all, eh, Doc? I shall arrange a post-mortem for some time tomorrow. However, it will only confirm my diagnosis. That's everything, is it? Yes. Yeah. Fine. Well, I'll let you get on with your protection. Oh, um, I remember. I shall need some more claim forms for my expenses. I'll run out. Have them send me some of them, will you? That's a good chair. Drive carefully. Austin! Sir? Come down here and guard the body. Morning, sir. Morning. Morning. Morning, sir. Everything, um, everything all right, is it? Yes, sir. Very quiet at the moment. Nothing to report, then? Yeah, well, we did have a dead body last night, sir. But as far as we could tell, there were no suspicious circumstances. Who's on it? D.I. Frost, sir. All right, just to make sure I'm kept informed. Uh, very good do, I thought, last night. Very good indeed. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Yes, very good. Yes, it was. Very, um... Good, very well organized. Well done. It was good to see you enjoying yourself, sir. Yes. Yes. Thank you. 
Yes, we all thought you were on very good form, sir. Very, um... Very lively. Yes, very lively, sir. I suppose you know where he is, do you? We found a stiff last night. He's informing the next of kin. There now. That wasn't so difficult, was it, Inspector? Sorry, Constable. Just knock it off, all right? Knock it off. Or what? Thump me as well, will you? <laughs> Just make sure he sees these as soon as he comes in. How can I pretend? If it wasn't today, it would have been tomorrow. We knew that. Of course we knew that. And the hours we spent with him. Me and his father. Trying to reason with him. Trying to help him. Trying to understand. And what does he do? He lies, he cheats, he steals. Anything to get his drugs and his drink. Well, could we expect any different? Right from the minute he was born, he's been nothing but trouble. And don't give me any of that nonsense about an unhappy home. Was his sister unhappy? Was he treated any different? Nothing to do with family. We gave that boy everything. Everything. And what's he given us in return, eh? Nothing but heartache. When did you last see him? Not for months. And then he turns up here last Saturday fortnight, just when we were going out. <laughs> the first time we've been out for ages. And I said to my husband, I'm not changing my plans, not for him. Breezing in here just when he thinks he will. I mean, what does he think we are? Bigger for me, though, eh? We come back, and he's taken my little French clock. The only thing of my mother's I had left that little clock. I know we didn't report it. What was the point? He'd only have it sold for something to stick into his arm. Oh, did you see his arms, the state of his arms? Oh, my God. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come and I... No, I don't want to see him. Oh, not the way he is now. I mean, you could ask his father, but I'd, I'd rather you didn't. I'd just about finish it. Ask Anne. Ask his sister. She, she's a good girl, my own. She'll understand. She'll do it. Thank you very much indeed, sir. That was a very good do, I thought, last night, sir. Yes, excellent. And a very good speech, if I might say so. Very appropriate. Thank you. Oh, uh, did you get home all right last night, sir? Yes, thank you. Oh, well, better safe than sorry, sir.
in there last night, Hazel. Hey, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Well, that's one way of getting a swift promotion. On to us. What is it? What's happened this time? Uh, can I come in, love? I need to talk. Well, I was going out. Can't it wait? Better if I come in. I supplied the goods and I want the money. Yeah, I won't keep you a second. No, I can't give you to the end of the month. I need the money, and I need it now. Right. Right. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um... Oh, hello, love. What is it? What's happened? That's exactly what I said. What is it? What's happened this time? He's dead. Benji. They want me to identify the body. Mum won't do it. I can't blame her. She's had enough one way and another. Two o'clock, I've got to be there. I was hoping you'd come with me. He's finally done it, Ray. He's killed himself. It's a question of attitude. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, come on, you're not that stupid. You've been dishing out the old Moody ever since you were posted to us. It's not our fault you took a swing at a DCI and got yourself shunted back to Constable. You don't know the circumstances. I don't want to know the circumstances. All I know is you're a pain in the butt and I've been lumbered with you. You do realise, of course, that this is horn-rimmed Harry's way of teaching us both a lesson. with it, Sergeant Wells. He doesn't waste one opportunity to make me look small, and you know it. Let me tell you something about Billy Wells. Everyone's got him chalked down as the perennial desk sergeant, the typical sergeant plod. Well, there was a time when he wanted to be an inspector so bad it hurt. Now, he's a bloody good cop, he's passed all his exams, but the board kept turning him down. And in the end, he threw his cards in. So when he comes across someone like you, someone who was an inspector, something he's never going to be, and who's chucked it all away. And I'm the one with the attitude problem? Terrific. When can we bury him? I'll let you know as soon as we've had the results from the post-mortem. I'm sorry I can't say more than that to this moment. Why do they need a post-mortem? I mean, I thought from what you said... I'm afraid in cases like this... It's what do you not... mean, in cases like this? He choked himself! That's what they said. How much more do they need to know? I mean, for God's sake, haven't his family suffered enough? I'm sorry, sir. There's nothing more I can oh. do about it. Oh, I'm sorry. We're all a bit... Well, obviously, you know. It's quite all right, sir. I understand. Wait a minute. 
Don't stop the car. What? Stop the car. Stop here. Just stop here. No, don't wait. See you later. I mean, you must admit, he looked decidedly shifty this morning, even for a superintendent. Just what is it you're after? Oh, yes, very shifty. Very, very shifty. You didn't let me invite you in for a cup of coffee, did you? <laughs> she did. She let him invite you in for a cup of coffee. You didn't know that his wife's away. You mean he didn't tell you his wife was away? Oh, dear. She <laughs> fell for it. She's got on back and fell for it. Look! He was leaving, I was leaving, he was going to call a minicab, it was on my way, so I offered him a lift. Oh, and the other rest. one. I tell you what, though, if I was going to get pulled, I'd rather get pulled by him than any of you lot. Mm. Oh, is that Mr Mully I saw in your car last night? Don't you start. Hey? Eh? Sorry, sir. Yes, yes, it was. Oh. I was giving him a lift home after the party. When we got there, he put on his number one dress uniform, we had it away six times on the plant table in the conservatory. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd just like to go and throw up. Afternoon, gents. Nice day for it. Ah, Jeff, post-mortem on Ben Cornish. You're a bit late, aren't you? Oh, don't tell me it's already started. Hey, coming in halfway through. It's over and done with. You know that Dr Bond? He don't hang about. Oh, he's still here, though, isn't he? Yeah, told you, he's gone. The other one's still here, though, that Dr... Uh, what's his name? Mackenzie. He's waiting to see it. Pathology one. Go in. Afternoon, Doctor. Charlie Rainbow out there said you wanted to see me. Um, who's this? That's Detective Constable Costello. He's new. Um, look, I'd rather talk to you alone. Is this police business? Of course it's police business. Then he stays. Thank you. We've got a bit of a problem. We? No one could have examined a body properly in the conditions we had to cope with last night. Well, apart from anything else, he was covered in filth. Well, you saw that yourself. So, if we missed anything, it was through no fault of our own. No, no, all right. What did the post-mortem show? You are agreed. Yes, yes. What did it show? He was beaten up just before he died. In fact, in fact, he was punched and kicked so badly that his liver virtually exploded. Are you trying to tell me that the poor little sod was beaten to death? There's no way he would have recovered from such injuries. But the actual cause of death was that he choked on his own vomit. So to my credit, in that respect, my diagnosis was perfectly correct. To your credit? It was all you could do to bring yourself to touch him. Oh, the conditions were quite appalling. Yes, yes, I know. You've got your best suit on. I know all that. We'll not get rid of it. It's being typed up now. Uh, look, Jack, if questions aren't asked, you will emphasise that we did everything possible last night. So that's what the wees are all about, is it? Don't worry, I'll carry the can. I'd hate to see a dedicated medical man lose some of his perks. Oh, that reminds me. Here are your expense forms you wanted. See if you can fill them in properly. 
Dump him. What? He didn't do the job properly. Get him dumped. That's what you would have done, is it? Straight in. No sweat. And what if you didn't do the job any better than he did? Well, that would have been for me to know and them to find out, wouldn't it, Gov? Hey, Inspector. Yes. I bet he didn't give you that number. What number? I knew he'd forget to tell you. I noticed it when I washed him down. See? Well, I knew he'd put his black and decker right through it, so I made a note. That's either a three or a five. That's either a one or a seven. I'll put them in brackets like. I reckon it's a phone number. I reckon you could be right. Thank you. You know, it's people like you that make my job a real pleasure. Who'd be a copper, eh? <laughs> yeah. Not the sort of place you come for your holidays, is it? Should have been here last night. Swan Lake wasn't in it. So then, this prints all over the back of this door. I think he's trying to hold it shut, stop it being pushed in. Huh? But, whoever it was out here, it kicked the door in, drags him out, huh? and then wallop. Comes down here to give himself a fix, someone takes offence, kicks the crap out of him? Possibly. But no gear found on him? No. Nope. Could have been nicked, hence the kicking. Or he's down here doing a deal and it turns nasty. Yeah. Whoever it was must have been upset pretty badly. I mean, you don't give someone a seeing two like that just because they forgot to send you a birthday card. In my experience, the sort of scum he must have been mixing with would have cut his throat for a dog end. Twenty-two years old. Any shut down here. You've had dealings with him before, haven't you? Ben? Oh, yes. Ever since he was a nipper. By the time he was 14, he was put in a home. Beyond parental control. It's funny, isn't it? Decent, ordinary people, leading decent, ordinary lives, they produce two kids. One straight as a die, and the other born out of step. Walks out a step ever since. So presumably there's some sort of file on him. Yes, you know, the work with George Toolan. He knows as much about him as anyone. But what about Drug Squad? I take it you do have some sort of list of local pushers. Look, we may not be West End Central, but we do have a certain amount of backup, and when we're not totally inefficient. Oh, well, I suppose I'd better go and have a word with Hornrin Harry. Tell him we've got a murder on our hands. I'll keep him happy. Give him something to do with his little calculator. What would you like me to do, Gov? Well, you can either start making the usual inquiries, or you can stay down here and get some ideas for your living room. That's you. What I don't understand is why none of these facts presented themselves last night. Well, the body was blocking the drain, so the place was flooded. And when you're standing up your armpits in cold pee, you're inclined to be less fastidious than you might be. But you're quite right, sir. I should have made sure the doctor checked the body more thoroughly. So in the end, it's down to me. Just so long as the trail isn't completely cold. Huh? My sentiments entirely, sir. Thank you for telling me. Oh, uh, Jack. Yes. I enjoyed our little chat last night. Cleared the air somewhat, I felt. Me too, sir. Good. Good. In fact, it was a very enjoyable evening all round, I thought. Costello, incident room go. Oh, and go. Mm. Apparently, Cornish was dotting down in some squat with Wally Peters and some bloke nobody knows the name of. Where is this squat? Don't know, I couldn't get an address. Well, that's handy. What do you mean, another bloke that nobody knows the name of? Nobody knows him. He's not local. Check out the DSS, you know, see if they've got any new faces signing on. Bring in Wally Peters. Control have already got a call out. Lucky old them, eh? Wally Peters in the back of the car. 
Costello. Yes, go. Yeah, I had something I wanted you to do. I don't know. What was it? I've had a word with Drug Squad, Gov. Yeah, go on. There are two new pushers operating in the area, but as of yet, they can't give us any details. They're checking addicts with a history of violence, but, and hold on to your hat, they would like to point out that all addicts can be driven to extreme violence when desperate. Well, who'd have guessed it? <laughs> Tell you what I want you to do. I want you to write that in big letters on the blackboard, in case we forget it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. Look. Check that out, see if it's a phone number, I think it is. Find out who it belongs to, see if it's got any connection with the deceased. Now, I'll tell you that that's either a three or a five, and that's either a one or a seven, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go over and have a word with Ben Cornish's sister. Not much of a one for system, is he? When was the last time you saw him? Uh, I don't know. Um, weeks. I, I don't know. And you've not had any sort of contact with him at all? No, we, um, we, we never saw him. He never came round to the house? No. So you've no idea where he was living? No. We understand he was living in a squat. Was he? So you've no idea where? No. So you don't know the names of who he was living with or people he associated with? Like I said, we... we never saw him. Well, I think that would be all, Mr Butler. Mrs Butler. I'm very sorry to have had to tell you about him like this. He wasn't an easy kid, young Benji, but he didn't deserve it. You're not sorry. Why do you say you're sorry? You're glad to see the back of him. We all are. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, it's all right, sir. I see myself out. No one wanted him dead, Annie. No one wanted him dead. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm looking for a Miss Grant. Miss Eileen Grant? She's not here. She went months ago. Oh, I see. Uh, thank you. Struck dumb or something. Sorry, go. Well, go on. Astound me. Well, that telephone number you wanted me to check. With these two sets of alternatives, we get four combinations: three four one four eight nine and five four one four eight nine, which are unobtainable. Five four seven four eight nine, which is a cinema. And 347489, which is a doctor's surgery. Dr. Royce Patton. And? No Benjamin Cornish registered as a patient, now or at any time. 
So why would he make a note of that particular doctor's number? Doctors supply drugs, don't they? Officially or otherwise. Anybody wants me, I'm in my other office. Who's guarding the fort? Costello. Oh, well, we can all rest easy. Who's think my crime prevention stickers? This lawnmower. Yeah, you know, had a life of its own. Tried to attack me once. This thing's getting a bit saucy and all. It might be better if you took some out. But what? If you took some out. Of an expert, are you or what? Got a degree in it. What are you doing here anyway? Well, that bloke Wally Peters. They found him. Good. You used to be with a serious crime squad, didn't you? For a bit, yeah. Good. Keep your eye on that lot then, will you? Knock it off, will you? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Frost. <laughs> you haven't got fat, have you? Constable, give the man a cigarette. Night, Walter, you smell terrible. I deny everything! You were clocking the nurses, you dirty old devil. Oh, I wasn't. Oh, no, I wasn't! I was looking for a bit of shelter. What about that squat you've been kipping in? Can't you to come in? Why not? They've stopped us, haven't they? Who has? They have. Who are they? Them! I don't want to talk about it. It upsets me. All right. Come out here and sit down on this bench. Why? Because I'm fed up talking to you in a broom cupboard. That's why. Now, come on. Get out. I'm not admitting anything. Go and sit down. Go and tell him it's been a mistake and I'm dealing with it. He's a peeping Tom. He's an old man who's had too much to drink and has got nowhere to kip. Go and sort it out. Go on. When did you last see Ben Cornish? We had an arrangement. Walter, he's dead. Ben Cornish. The drugs, was it? I told him it would kill him in the end. No, it wasn't drugs. Someone kicked him to death. Did you know that more people die at four o'clock in the morning than any other time? No. Except in China. 
or when there's an earthquake or some. My sister died at four o'clock on a Sunday. Sunday, October the 22nd. I'm going to drink, have you? No. When did you last see him? I told you we had an arrangement. Don't keep asking me questions. I'm tired. I need my rest. I'm not entitled to much, I know. But I am entitled to a decent night's sleep. You what? Oh, come on, Bill. Don't mess about. Just lock him up. If you're so keen to give him a bed, take him round to your place. No, he doesn't like the wallpaper. I was lying. I was looking at that nurse. I lost it after her. Carnal thought. Shut up. Don't keep asking me questions. Lock him up. My lines are still restless. Be this Please on your head. Now you're putting in a jeopardy the entire female population. On what charge? International diamond smuggling and peeing on a double yellow line. Oh, Sarge, do it. Leave it all. I need to talk to him about Ben Cornish. Well, why can't you do it downwind in the car park? Because I'm tired, and he's tired, and he's been putting a lot away, and I'm not getting any sense out of him. So I want him banged up nice and tight, so I can speak to him first thing in the morning. You do know the last time we had him in a cell, we had to hose it down afterwards. Yes, I know, William, but what you've got to remember is that he's just a human being like you are. Bollocks. I knew you'd understand. I'll give you a lift if you like. No, it's all right, I'll get the boss. No, no, don't be dark. I'm not drop you off. Where are you living? Sefton Avenue. I'm in Diggs. Diggs? I thought you were a family man. So did I. Oh, I, uh... I behaved pretty badly after all the trouble. You know, she took the brunt of it and, and one day she'd had enough. Took the kid and off she went. That'll sort itself out, one way or another. Are you hungry, eh? Well, it's a bit late for that now, isn't it? Yeah, well, I can always make up bacon and egg. Well, come on, yes or no? I'm not after your body. Yeah, thanks. I couldn't sleep. Anything you want to talk about? No, I just... just can't sleep. It's something I hear, probably. It's not happening again, is it, Royce? Tell me it's not happening again. For God's sake, Linda. I wake up in the morning, first thing I'd think about, Peter bloody Rubens and how I could nail him. Oh. I was obsessed. I admit it. Obsessed. Come the day I've got it all set. I'm half an hour away from feeling his collar and saying, right, you bastard, gotcha. And the chief steps in. Oh. The smarmy bastard's taking over. Well, I'm gobsmacked. I've done all the work, he's gonna get all the glory. Oh, oh. Oh, it needs rank, he says. And besides, you're too personally involved, and he's got, he's got this stupid grin on his face. This really stupid grin. Was well, that right, sir, I said. And I hit him right in the mouth. Wallop. Wallop.
So, here I am. Bottom of the pile again. But I'll be back. I'll show the bastards. I will. I'll show the bastards. In. You. All of them. Morning. Oh, Hazel. Uh, come here a minute. I want you to do something for me. I want you to run a PNC check on this motor vehicle. It's a black mini metro on the name and address. Right. All right. And I want it done on the QT. Yes, sir. Good, thank you. Any chance of a bit of toast and marmalade? No, there bloody isn't. Sir. Cool. Another cup of tea, will you? Well, I'm feeling rough this morning, so I just want you to listen to me, Walter. Do you remember what I told you last night about Benny? Eh? Really? He's dead, Walter. Somebody killed him. That's right. You told me someone killed him. That's right. You were living in a squat with him. He worked by a little fella. A bit lippy, I suppose. That's kids nowadays, isn't it? Tell me about the squat. Mm, it was me, him, and this other fella. I want to have a look round. Won't do you no good. What's the address? I don't know. I could take you there. All right then, when did this happen? Must have been sometime that afternoon. Weren't like it when I came home for my lunch. I told you, that's why I was looking for somewhere to keep. We'll have to find out who the owner is. Yeah. You won't find anything there. I told you, they threw all our stuff out. We would have been all right, you know, if Benny hadn't given him that lip. Give a new lip. Them grills he sends round, whoever he is, fella owns it. Did you see what they did to his hand, did you? What happened? Them grillers come round, when was it? About 10 days ago. Said this bloke had bought the place so out. Benny gets a bit clever, all that I know my rich stuff, says he's gonna write to his MP. Chief Gorilla grabs his iron, puts it in the door, bangs it shut and says, let's see you write to him now, Mr. Knoll. Broke the lot, he did. Went to take him to hospital. You'd think that Benny would have learned his lesson, wouldn't you? I mean, them blokes are trying. Not him. Not a bit of it. I'm going to find out where they're from and I ain't going to have them, he says. Too late for that now, Benny, my son. You said you had an arrangement with him. What was that about? <coughs> my throat's gone all dry. Any chance of a cup of tea or something? You had an arrangement with him? I was supposed to meet him last night, though he didn't turn up. Mind you, he said he might be late because this other bloke he had to see. Well, I think it was a load of old Moody. I think he was just mouthing off at that. What other bloke? He didn't tell me. He said I might mess it up. Mess what up? I don't know. 
All I know is, came back home grinning all over his face one day. Said we don't have to worry anymore, and that he was on to something that was going to make him rich for years. Mm -hmm. Any idea what it was? Uh, I'm not a recording machine. Who was this other bloke that you shared the squat with? I don't know, just turned up. Friend of Benny's, they were at school together. School? That's what he said. So he's local? He's Scotch, I know that. Any idea where we can find him? I think he was moving on, at least he said he was. He got scared when they did that to Benny's hand. Can you give us a description? Hello? Hello? No. I'm afraid she's not available at the moment. And I'll have to go, cos I'm in conference. With Bannis. They threw it out with all the other stuff. Who did? I told you them blokes who did the place. They threw all our stuff out. What do you mean, it was Benny's? He found it. Found it. All right. Thanks. Now, the property's just been taken over by G&C Holdings. Old block's due to come down the end of the month. Who does that clearing out? Hind Securities? Oh, bad luck. A right bunch of lunatics. You know him, Gov. Trevor Hind. He used to run that little club off the old square. Oh, yes, him, Mad Trevor. Let's get him there at that squat. What do you want to do about the doctor? Oh, I mean, I knew there was something. Yeah, I'll go and see him. Just a thought, Gov, but it might be an idea to drop in a bit of salt. Let him stew for a while. Would you by any chance be trying to tell me my job, Constable? I wouldn't by any chance be trying to tell you anything, Governor. Give him a ring and make an appointment. Bit of luck, he'd have a look at my piles at the same time. Likes to let you know he's been around a bit, doesn't he, Gov? That's because he has, Constable. Um. That name and address you wanted, sir. All right, thank you. I'm sorry to disturb you, Doctor, but there's a policeman on the phone. A Detective Constable Costello. What does he want? He wants to make an appointment for a Detective Inspector Frost to come and see you. I did ask him what it was about, but he wouldn't say. Would you like to speak to him yourself? No. Uh, just a minute. This afternoon before surgery. Who's going to pay for all this? Well, if you'd like to send me the bill, sir, I'll make sure it goes through the proper channels. Tell me what you're looking for and I might be able to help you. If I knew what I was looking for, I wouldn't be looking for it, would I, sir? Clues? Is that it? Well, it's all grist to the mill, isn't it? You need squatters, we need clues. I told you, we threw it all out. Why do you bother with these people, eh? They're filth. Give you much aggravation, did they? Are you serious? We've heard the one who's dead gave you a lot of aggravation. Ah, oh, it was him, was it? The one with the mouth. The one with the busted knuckles. He was distracting us from going about our legitimate business. 
So you taught him the error of his ways? He had a big mouth and he was out of order. He was nine stone dripping wet and mostly out of his mind. Take him on yourself, did you? Or did you send the dogs in? I don't think I like your attitude. I don't think I give a toss what you think. You've got an hyperactive tongue, Constable. I've also got the desire to punch you right in the nose. Wait! Go downstairs and wait in the car. Go on. Sorry about that, sir. Not that he would, of course, you know, punch you in the nose, just a figure of speech. Uh, <clears throat> just so there's no misunderstanding, no. neither me nor none of my executives laid a finger on that kid. He tripped over the carpet. Of course he did. When did you last see him? Uh, about a week ago, maybe ten days. One of his mates was telling me that he was going to pay you back for busting his hand. Pay me back? Pay me back? You didn't bump into him again, did you, by any chance, and teach him another lesson? I said he tripped over the carpet. Of course you did. Where were you the night before last, between 8 and 11? Tuesday. Hmm. Down the club working out. Then in the bar drinking carrot juice. Sorry to keep you, Inspector. It is Inspector, isn't it? Yes, Frost. Detective Inspector Frost. Yes, I know your Chief Inspector Allen. Oh, well, I, I say I know him. We've, we've played golf a couple of times. Sit down, won't you? Yes, thank you. Popular game, Miss Golf. Well, if you're thinking of taking it up, don't. They reckon that's how Jim Allen got his ulcer. Well, it's how we all did. How is he, by the way? Oh, still rolling his eyes and chewing lumps of chalk. So I must give him a ring. Fix up another game. Well, he's away at the moment, sir, on a course. Oh, not a golf course. No, sir, no. He's away being educated. They like to educate policemen nowadays so that we can quote the relevant section as we bash them over their head with a sock full of wet sand. <laughs> so then, what can I do for you? You know a young man by the name of Benjamin Cornish? No, I, I don't think so. He's not a patient. I said I don't know him. No, sir, you said you didn't think you knew him. I was jogging your memory. No, Inspector. He's not a patient, and to the best of my knowledge, I don't know him. Well, that's all I really need to know, sir. Couldn't you have done this by telephone? Yes. Sorry if I've wasted your time. Both our times, I would have thought. No, it's not really wasted, though, is it, sir? I mean, how long have you been in this area? What, 18 months, sir? Our paths would have crossed sooner or later. It's always nice to put a face to a name. I uh, do have a rather full surgery this afternoon, Inspector. Yes, of course you have, sir. They can put a man on the moon, but they still can't stop your nose running, can they? Oh, I haven't told you why. Why what? Why well, I wanted to know about Benjamin Cornish. I'm surprised you didn't ask me, sir. Well? Oh, he's dead. Someone killed him. I still don't see what that has to do with me. Well, someone told me that he was a patient of yours, and I thought you might be able to tell us something about him. Obviously, they got it wrong. Mind you, it's my own fault. They usually get it all wrong, don't they, people like that? People like what? Well, he was a drug addict. Didn't I mention it? Sorry? I say, I think they've gone over to see her mother. Well, I know they have. Thank you. That poor boy. Just think, he was here only two days ago.
Excuse me. What did you make of Dr. Patton? What? Oh, the doctor. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got something on his mind. I don't know what. We'll soon find out, won't we? Any messages for me, Ollie? No. Good. Anybody wants me? I'm in the canteen. Oh, God. Yeah. That mobile phone he nicked, Cornish. Well, he might well have made a few calls. You know, something for nothing. He probably couldn't resist it. And if he did, the company will have it on record. You never know. Might give us something. Good idea. I'll get on to it. No, don't bother. George Toonan is already doing it for me. 30 all, your serve. Bill, give him a break, will you? Give him a break. You know perfectly well I'm talking about Costello. He's an arrogant bastard. I know, he's a good copper too. Maybe they're one and the same thing. After what he did, he's lucky to be in the job. He knows that. But if he's got enough bottle to front it out, I mean, the least we can do is give him a break. Bollocks. There you are, you see, you're all heart, you, aren't you? I'm a good copper too, Inspector. And whoever gave me a break, eh? Eh? I came home and he'd broken in. It, it wasn't the first time. He'd done it before. He only did it when he was desperate and needed money or something to sell. We didn't call the police because... because it was family, I suppose. But you knew he'd been killed. You knew I was trying to do my job. Why did you lie to me? Why did you say you hadn't seen him? I didn't... I didn't want to get him into any more trouble. Yes, all right. What time did he call? It was about three o'clock, you said, yeah? Mm. And he didn't contact you again? No. Yes. Huh? But I didn't tell you. He phoned when you were out. We'd had a row about Benny, about what he'd done. That's what next door must have heard, us rowing. So, what? You went out to cool down, is that it? We were both, you know, pretty upset. It was all getting out of hand. I had some stock to pick up from a mate of mine over in Chelmsford, so I gave him a ring and went over. What time did Benji call? Be about half eight. What did he say? He, he said... He said he was sorry. But he'd pay us back. When? He didn't have two apennies for a penny. I mean, come on, love. How could he? Did he say where he was going to get this money from? No. Only he was definitely going to pay us back. <laughs> definitely. There are one or two of his personal bits and pieces that need to be collected from the station. I thought you'd prefer to do it rather than your wife. She's obviously very upset. We, um, we should have told you the first time it happened. We should have said something then. The thing is, once you start with a lie, there's somehow no going back, is there?
Hello, Arlie. How did you find out where I was living? I uh, <clears throat> called at the old flat. She gave me your new address. Just like that? Oh. No, no. It wasn't just like that. Why? Sorry? Why are you here? It's usually me that asks the questions. Don't rule out the funnies, Jack. I'm not impressed anymore. I, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, really. I, I just, um... You didn't even tell me she was dead. I had to read about it in the local paper. No, no, no. Why didn't you come and tell me she was dead? That was the idea, wasn't it? That's what we agreed, wasn't it? Yes, I know it. I don't know, somehow it just seemed wrong. All right to share my bed when she was alive, but not when she was dead. Yes, it sounds reasonable enough, Jack. She was my wife. But you didn't think about that at the time, you selfish bust. was a mistake. I'm sorry, I think I'll leave. Why did you come here? I don't know, I just... You just wanted to see how I'm surviving without you. Well, I'm fine. And now you know I am, you can clear off and carry on playing a big detective, because that's the one thing you're good at. Do you know why? Because you don't have to feel anything. You can just slice up people's lives and you don't have to feel anything. And I'll tell you this. You're not that bloody good a detective because you certainly had me worked out all wrong. Right. You misunderstood me entirely, Jack. Do you know that? I was relieved when you didn't come back. I was. I was relieved. And do you know why, Jack? Because you were making too much of it. It was an affair, that's all. A bit on the side. Sex. Not particularly good sex either. Let's face it, you're not exactly Warren Beatty. If you don't mind, I've got to get on. I've got people coming for dinner. Hello, Denton, see ID. I wonder if you might have a word. What the hell, sir? Stop the bus, don't worry about. Yeah. Morning, Gov. Good morning. Have they got him? They've got him in the interview room. Good. Who are they? Sorry, Gov. George and what's his name, the new bloke. What do you mean, what's his name? You know perfectly well what his name is, so say it. DC Costello, Gov. Thank you. George wants to know if you want to sit in. No, I don't. Tell him to get on with it. What are you grinning at? Sorry, sir. Oh, sir? Yes? Cornish made four calls on the mobile. Mm -hmm. One to Do Dr. Patton's surgery, one to his sister's house, and 340217, he phoned twice. It's... Don't tell me. Let me guess. So when was this? About a month ago. What, you just bumped into him? No, I knew he was here. I came looking for him. Why? He was a mate. I needed somewhere to stay. Tell us about the night he was killed. Like what? Like where were you? I was with some friends of mine. Ask them. Did he ever say anything about some deal he was trying to fix? Some what? Now there's talk about him being into something that was going to make him a lot of money. <laughs> oh yeah. Drugs, was it? Starting to push, was it? No idea. But he 
get your drugs from, Gordon? I'm registered. Mm-hmm. And that's enough for you, is it? You don't need to go elsewhere. Does the name Patton mean anything to you? Dr. Royce Patton? Is that who Benny was dealing with? Is that who he was getting his stuff from? I've no idea. Is that where you were getting it from? Get stuffed. OK, Gordon, if that's the way you want it, fair enough. Fuck him. For what? All those little packets of Class A substances we found hidden about your purse. You bastards! Tell us about Dr. Patton. I had nothing to do with it. It was Benny, all right? Tell us about it. It's all right, Kendra. There's nothing for you to worry about. Who are you? Detective Inspector Frost, Denton CID. CID? What do you mean, CID? Linda, please. Well? Uh, Mrs. Patton, I do believe it would be better if you... Did you know they were coming? Is that why you didn't want to come with me? Oh, for God's sake, don't be so... Look, I had no idea. They telephoned me just after you left. Mrs. Patton, your husband is helping us with our inquiries. There's nothing to worry about. I do believe it would be better if you left. Anything you have to ask my husband can be asked in my presence. We have nothing to hide. Of course. Doctor, I was asking you if you remembered a young man by the name of Gordon Hicks. And I said no. Are you sure? To the best of my knowledge. Only he's a friend of Benjamin Cornish, the young man who was murdered. What young man? Three days ago, Mrs. Patton, we had reason to believe that the young man in question was a patient of your husband. That's why we interviewed him yesterday. Did you not mention it, sir? Obviously not. Anyway, these two young lads, they went to school together. But when I say school, I suppose it was to them, in a way. Though what they would have learned there wouldn't have been particularly beneficial to society, because it was a hostel in the care of the local authority. Each one, in his own way, being a naughty boy and out of control. Is this beginning to ring any bells, sir? The hostel was in Northamptonshire, a place called Rushton. According to the records, the name of the visiting doctor was Patton, Dr. Royce Patton, MB, DCH, MRCGP. Would that be you, sir? It was, it was eight years ago. There were nearly a hundred boys in that place. I can't be expected to remember all their names. I thought you'd remember the name of Ben Cornish, though. Especially as he rang this house twice on the evening that he died, and that was only three days ago. He used a mobile telephone. The calls are logged. One at 6.30, lasting about half a minute. One at 7.45, lasting three minutes, 25 seconds. Perhaps the calls were for you, Mrs. Patton. No, they were for my husband. With a bit of luck, maybe she's gone to put the kettle on, sir. God's sake! It's quite right, sir, in very bad taste. Well, tell the doctor what else we know about him, Constable. At the time Cornish and Hicks were at the hostel, allegations were made of indecent assault on some of the younger boys by members of staff. In this case, the allegations were never substantiated, but the hostel was closed down a year later. No smoke without mire, Mater. 
One of the members of staff interviewed at the time was a Dr. Royce Patton. You, sir. There was nothing, nothing shown against me. The whole thing was a complete, a complete and malicious fabrication. Well, that's quite right, sir. At each of the times in question, you were with your wife. As she told the then investigating officers, you were completely in the clear. What is it that you're, you're saying? I mean, what, what is it that you want from me? It's not what I want from you, sir. It's what they wanted, or at least one of them did. Two weeks ago, Cornish and Hicks, they saw you at the hospital. You didn't see them. Well, if you did, you wouldn't have recognised them. But they recognised you. Young Benjamin saw you as a way of supplementing his income. He was blackmailing you, sir. Well, he was trying to. Oh, it doesn't matter whether you were involved in that other business or not. A word in the right ear. Your life wouldn't have been worth living, would it, sir? He, um... He telephoned me at the surgery. And he started telephoning the house. Standing outside. Trying to unnerve me, I suppose. And did it, sir? Unnerve you? Well, of course it unnerved me. What do you think? Did you pay him any money? No. Would you have done if he hadn't been killed, if he persisted? I... I don't know. He... He said if I didn't pay him, he would sell his story to the newspapers. You said yourself, he could have ruined my life. Unless he was stopped. You don't really believe that I had anything to do with his death? No, I don't, sir. Say goodbye to your wife for me. Sorry if I've upset her. How are you? Inspector. I'd be grateful if it were possible not to involve me in any of this. Officially, I mean. I mean, I can't see that any of what we've discussed uh, can have a direct bearing on your inquiries, and after all, the young man is dead, and it... Well, there seems no point in blackening his name any further. You do understand? Yes. You know, sir, it had been a lot easier if you'd come clean when I first spoke to you. After all, you've got nothing to hide, have you, sir? Blackening his name any further. What a very considerate man you are, Royce. Linda. You disgust me. Do you know that? You disgust me. Nothing to hide. We've all got something to hide, Dr. Patton. Wonder what yours is. Wonder what mine is what? Oh, no, not you, Governor. The good doctor. The doctor what? Got something to hide, I was saying. We all have. Jack, what did you expect? I mean, if you'd phoned or something, anything. But not like that. It wasn't fair. It just wasn't fair. I don't know, I just... I just wanted to see you. Not you, Jack. Me. I'm talking about me. What it did to me. I don't care about you. Not anymore. 
And don't give me any of that, so what are you doing here stuff. I'm here because I want you to understand what you did to me. I'm here because... I didn't mean some of those things I said. No, you had every right. Really, I didn't mean it. I was just, I was just lashing out. Glad to have something to hit at last. Glad you didn't do it when you had that saucepan in your hand. You see, I really thought it meant more to you. I really thought that you and I, God knows, I didn't want that to happen to me. Maybe there is a God. Maybe that's his way. But I really did think that you and I... Or maybe... Maybe I was just deluding myself. I really did love you, Jack. I really did. Is that it? Sorry. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, I'm afraid that's it. It's not much to leave behind, is it? And if you're wondering what the sparking plug is for, it's very handy for breaking car windows. Hello, sir. What have you been up to this time? Probably didn't recognise me. Not surprised the state he was in. Look those keys, Sarge. What are you talking about? Show me there. What's his name? I picked him up the other night, smashed out of his head. How do you mean you picked him up? We got a call from the landlord of the White Swan. He was in there causing trouble and they wanted him out. So I went round and sorted it. Jack? Yeah, yeah, just a minute. Go on, go on, tell me. Well, that's it, really. He had a car, but I wasn't going to let him drive. So I dropped him near the station and told him to take a taxi. And did he take one? I don't know. I had a call. When was this? A couple of three nights ago. What, Tuesday, just before 10. Last time I spoke to you, you told me that Tuesday evening you drove over to see someone at Chelmsford. Do you remember telling me that, Mr. Mother? You said you telephoned this friend and you drove over to Chelmsford to pick up some stock. So, could you tell me this man's name? Where he lives, you know, where we could contact him, just so that he can confirm what you've told us. It isn't true, is it, Mr. Butler? You've been lying. Why have you been lying, Mr. Butler? It was one of those days I just didn't want to start. Business has been going down the pen for months. I've been just hanging on. Tuesday, I went to see the bank manager. And that's it. No more support. I'm finished. We're going to lose everything. The business, the house, everything. What was I going to tell Andy? She didn't know. I've been hiding it from her. Lying to her. Oh, she still doesn't know. I got home. And he'd been there. You work your guts out to make a nice home, and that's what the likes of him do to it. I'd have turned him in the first time, but he's... he's family. She loves him. We can't have kids. And I'm glad. Do you know that? I'm glad. Because if that's the way they turn out... We had this 
huge row and I went out and I got well and truly drunk. I started a bit of a row in the swan and this young copper came and he took me outside. He wouldn't let me drive, but he, he dropped me off to get a cab. Only there are no sodding cabs, so I start to walk. And then, then I saw him, sort of dancing along the street. And I called out to him, and he sees me, and he starts to run, so I go after him. And he runs down this toilet and slams the door, and he's yelling this filth at me. And I hate him. I hate him. I must have kicked the door in because he's lying there. I, I didn't know I'd killed him. I, for God's sake, I didn't want to kill him. I just wanted to... I, I, I wouldn't have left him there like that if... I mean, I knew I'd hurt him, but... When you came and told us that he was... He was dead. I just... I just panicked, I suppose. I kept saying to myself, what good was he? I mean, he, would, he wouldn't have lasted another year, would he, the state he was in? I mean, would he? Jesus Christ. What am I going to tell his sister? What am I going to tell Annie? Fancy a pint? Come on, I'll buy you a pint. Yes. Yeah, all right, why not? What do you reckon to Dr. Patton? Nothing much to reckon, though, is it? According to the Scotch kid, he was definitely involved. Yeah, well, maybe. I think I'll get the North Ants boys to send the file over. There's only his wife's word that he was with her when those perverts were at it. By the look on her face, I'd say there's a chance I could persuade her to change her mind. Come on, that was eight years ago. Do you know what that DCH stands for after his name? Diploma in Child Health. He was in a position of trust. They all were. They probably still are. Yes. Bloody sure I'm right. Besides, if you get a result, it'll look good when it comes to the promotion board. Eh? Constable? 